This material has been excerpted from the college television course, The Mechanical Universe, and re-edited specifically for use in the high school curriculum. The Mechanical Universe is funded by the Annenberg CPB Project, made possible by a grant from the National Science Foundation. In 1820, Hans Christian Ersted made his great discovery of how electricity could be turned into magnetism. And at that point, every scientist in Europe knew there was another great discovery just waiting to be made. That was how to use magnetism to create electricity. The 18th century's most diligent and intuitive scientist, Michael Faraday, probed the mysteries of science because, for him, the building blocks of nature had been created with a fundamental unity. And Mr. Faraday believed that the blueprint was to be found within the laws of physics. With that belief, Faraday was motivated to unearth a new link between two of Mother Nature's fundamental forces, magnetism and electricity. First, Faraday reproduced Ersted's experiment, and then, in a roundabout way, he took a major step forward. He invented a device that kept twisting as it followed the circular magnetic field created by a current. With this amazing device, an electric current could create physical work. In other words, this was the world's first electric motor. But Faraday's restless mind saw more than circles of magnetic force in Ersted's discovery. He saw a crucial scientific question. If an electric current could create a magnetic field, could a magnetic field create an electric current? The answer didn't come easily. It took lamp oil and paper, brilliance and tenacity, untold combinations of coils, magnets, and wires. It took more than a decade, which is why biographers note his legendary patience. But in 1831, Michael Faraday had the answer. As he connected a battery to one coil, current flowed briefly in another coil. He'd found the answer, and in the process he'd discovered it, the principle of electromagnetic induction. How does electromagnetic induction really work? In other words, how can a magnetic field drive an electric current around a circuit? Magnetic fields apply forces to electric charges, but only if the charges are in motion. The direction of the force, F, is perpendicular to the velocity, V, and the field, and depends on the sign of the charge, Q, in this case, negative. 
For example, the charges might be electrons in a piece of wire. Just moving a wire through a magnetic field makes a current try to flow. But the field of a bar magnet can be perpendicular at every point to a circular loop of wire. So, moving the loop creates a force that drives a current all the way around the loop. The current flows one way if the loop moves upward, and the other way if the loop moves downward. Of course, a current also flows if the loop stands still and the magnet moves. One way if the magnet moves downward. The other if the magnet moves upward. In fact, Faraday found that any method of changing the magnetic field through a circuit would make a current flow. For example, he could induce a current by moving a bar magnet relative to a coil. And when Faraday connected a coil to a battery, the sudden increase in the magnetic field induced a surge of current in another coil. Both these ideas can be expressed in terms of magnetic flux. The total magnetic flux through a surface is the product of the magnetic field component perpendicular to the surface times the area of that surface. That's also the total flux through a loop bounding that surface. According to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, there is an induced voltage or electromotive force around the loop E equal to minus the rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop. Current flows through a coil of wire whenever the magnetic flux is changing. The current flows one way if the flux decreases and the other way if the flux increases. But the current induced in the wire creates a flux of its own, whose direction depends on the direction of the current. The flux created by the induced current always opposes the change in the external flux. This rule is known as Lenz's law. Faraday's theory reveals something new about the nature of electric and magnetic fields. And in the process, changes the rules by which nature's game is played. Remember, when electric and magnetic fields were seen only as static and unchanging, so were the rules. Magnetic fields form closed loops, but never converge to a point. Electric fields converge to a point, and were thought never to form closed loops. In mathematical language, that means the voltage difference around any closed path is always equal to zero. Those rules were true so long as everything was static and didn't change with time. But when the magnetic flux through any circuit changes, whether it's a real piece of hardware or an imaginary mathematical path, then there's a real electromotive force around the loop. This potential difference around the circuit is not zero, but instead is equal to the negative time rate of change of flux. In other words, there is a way to make closed loops of electric field lines after all, and it's accomplished by changing the magnetic flux. When Faraday discovered that a changing magnetic flux could make closed loops of electric field lines, he added something extraordinary to the laws of electricity and magnetism. Faraday's momentous discovery, the great
greatest of his productive life, would alter civilization through new technology. From his time on, electricity and magnetism were mutually embraced in what would become known as electromagnetism. This material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number SPE 8318420. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation.